Hey guys, what's going on? Um, I'm going to show you how to make a cryptocurrency in Python. Uh, just make sure you have Python installed, obviously, I'm guessing you do if you've clicked on this video, or some kind of text editor to work in Python. I recommend Atom, it's pretty good. Um, if you don't have Atom, you can just get it here, atom.io for, uh, for Mac, or if you have, or for whatever operating system you're working on. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop here. And I'm going to call it the name of the cryptocurrency. If you don't know the name, just call it like blockchain or something. Um, I came up with the name Shockwave. So I'm going to call it Shockwave for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that in Atom. I'm just going to drag it to Atom. Awesome, there we go. So I have it open here. If you couldn't drag it to Atom, you can open it from Atom using that. Um, so now we're going to just create a new file. I'm just going to call it blockchain.py. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to do. And uh, today we'll just work in working on the back end of the cryptocurrency, like making the blocks and, the, and making the blockchain and making uh, everything work functionality wise. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just set up my, uh, my file here with the, just a default header and okay. And then we're going to need a SHA-256, so from Hashlib, import SHA-256. We're going to use uh, SHA-256 to hash um, the blocks in the blockchain. And then we're going to need a block. So I'm just going to set that up now. And then we're going to need to define what the blockchain looks like. So I'm going to set that up there. And then, and then I'm just gonna do okay. So that's how I'm gonna just set up our file for now, so that we can test it in the main here. So let's just define what the block looks like, okay? So what does a block in a blockchain look like? Well, it's going to have some form of data. In our case, it's going to be a transaction from one person to another. Like that data could say, uh, Will transfers Bob $5. So right now, I'm just going to set that data variable equal to none. And then that block is going to have a hash. And right now, we're just going to set that to none. And then it's going to have an arbitrary number called the nuance. If you're familiar with cryptography, you know what I mean. If you're not, don't don't really worry about it. But it's basically an arbitrary number, and it's going to come into play when we use proof of work in mining later on. And then that block's also going to have the hash from the previous block. So um, I'm just going to set that to 0, 64 times because that's what... Because our SHA-256 hashes are always going to be a fixed length of 64 uh, characters. And our first block isn't going to have a previous hash because there's no block before it. So right now I'm just going to set it to, you know, 0, 0, 0, 64 times, right? Okay, so now we can say, we can define our dunder init function. And we're going to need to have the data inputted to the block when it's initialized and then we're also going to need the block number for now i'm going to set it a default parameter to zero and then we're going to set the data self.data is equal to data and our self.number is equal to number okay so now i'm just going to test I'm just going to create an instance of the block for now inside our main function just so we can see that everything gets working fine. So let's say block equals block and then we need to specify the data. So let's say hello world and then let's give it a number one. Okay, 
me. So now I'm just going to open my terminal. I'm going to switch into this folder on my desktop. And then I'm going to run python blockchain.py. Okay, so it looks like everything worked fine. We didn't get any errors. So we've created an instance of our block class with data hello world and then for, and number one is the block. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to um, define a, ha um, a block needs to have a hash. Right now we set it to none. And that hash needs to be updated using its data, its nuance, its previous hash, and the number. So I'm going to define our hash function, uh, hash self. And then I'm going to, what do we want to hash? We want to have the self.previous hash. We want to hash self.number, the block number. We want to hash self.data. And we want to hash our nuance. So now this isn't this code obviously doesn't work. So we need to actually use SHA-256 to do this. So um, I'm just gonna write call this update hash for now. We'll have to define our update hash function, and I'm gonna say return update hash. So let's define this update hash function just because it'll make our lives easier. And I'm gonna use args. So if you're not familiar with args, it's basically like whatever the amount of uh, arguments we're going to pass into this function, it's just going to uh, create a list of them called args. So if I say for arg in args, print arg, and if I was to uh, pass in update hash of, I could just pass in as many parameters as I want. I could pass in one, I could pass in another one, whatever I pass in. And I'll show you when I run it, it'll print those args for arg and args. So we can just create a list of arguments. So that's what I'm going to do because we're going to pass in these to our update hash function in the args list. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say I want, our, I want the text we're going to hash. I'm just going to create it to be an empty string right now. And then I'm going to initialize the SHA-256 like so and then like we said earlier for arg and args in this case our previous hash number data and nuance I'm going to pass those in and I'm going to add them to the hashing text and I'm just going to create a string of that for now be good like so and then we're going to update the hash of the hashing text. So we're actually going to hash all of this data here combined together. And we're going to encode it using UTF-8. And then we're going to return that hash like so. So let's just test it out right now. Let's say print update hash. And let's just print the hash of hello world. Okay, so here's a hash of hello world. Looks like it's working fine. Let's try to pass in another argument of hello. See if it hashes that, and it does. So our update hash function looks good. Now we can go back to here, and this should work. Our update hash will hash our previous hash number, data, and nuance. Awesome. Now, we're, now I'm just going to define a under string function of the block class just so that we can print out the block nicely and I'm just going to return a string of the block number and we'll insert that later and then I'm going to print the hash of the block and then I'm going to print the previous hash of the block And then I'm going to print the data of the block. And then I'm going to print the new ounce of the block.
Okay, so now let's just insert those into our placeholders. So dot number uh, for our block number self dot hash for our hash self dot previous hash in self dot data self dot new ops. This is a pretty long line. I'll clean that up later. So basically, if you're not familiar with the uh, dunder string function, instead of here, I'll just comment it out right now. And if I was to say print block, it's just going to print this, our instance of the block. But if I have this string function, when I say print block, it's going to print what we just defined, block one, and here's some data in it. And it actually looks like it's working pretty well when we've printed this block. We have a nuance of zero, uh, data of hello world, our previous hash of 64 zeros is here, a hash of the block uh, with all the data inside, and our block number one. So that looks pretty good. Now, now we can move on to defining the blockchain because we've defined what a block looks like. And for the blockchain, I'm just going to set our difficulty equal to four for now and that should work fine and then when we define our blockchain we can we can attach our previous blockchain from before if existing so if the blockchain already if we already have some data in it, uh, we can continue to add to it instead of making a new one every time. So now I'm going to define what adding a block looks like to the blockchain. So add that block to the chain. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our blockchain as a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary is going to have its hash, previous hash, number, data, and nuance. So what we're going to add is we're going to append a block to the chain. And we're going to append it, like I said, in a dictionary format. And we're going to say hash. And we're going to attach the block dot hash. And then we're going to say previous. And then we're going to block dot previous hash. Perfect. And then we're going to attach the number of the block. the data and the new ones. So you got some pretty long lines of code here. I'm just going to clean them up so they're not as as messy looking. So let's just do that. Already looks better. Our string. Just tidy it up here. Yeah, yeah. And there we are. We've tidied it up. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll continue in the next video. Thanks again, guys.